This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Um, we've got a call on a walk-in cooler not working, and yeah, they stuck coil. So we're gonna get this guy shut down and uh, see what we can do to get it uh, clean, de-iced, and uh, figure out what caused it to ice up. Funny story, I was just telling my apprentice, this exact evaporator coil I, I installed and sold to the restaurant because uh, th like probably 10 years ago, this manager that used to run this restaurant uh, he was very cheap, you know, and uh, he wanted to de-ice it himself and he stuck a steak knife in the back of the coil. That makes me laugh. Well, so we installed this probably 10 years ago or something like that, but we're gonna get up there and look at that thermostat and see what it looks like, um, see what it's set at. We're trying to find a reason for this guy to ice up, so. Set for 35, four degree differential, that doesn't seem bad at all. I mean, whether or not the sensor is accurate, I don't know. Look at the uh, fire sprinkler placement on this one. I remember this coil. Fire sprinkler is ridiculously in a horrible place. All right, so um, process here. Turn off the power. This one has a utility switch right here. Take the covers off, take the fan guards off, start defrosting, and then we'll try to figure out what caused it. This is an old R22 system. It's pretty beat up. Looks like we need to put some new insulation on the suction line. Uh, we've changed almost everything else here. This is their beer walk-in, and I believe this is their walk-in freezer. It's all been replaced. So this is original, probably from 2001, I think, is when this restaurant was built. Let's look at the serial number. 01, yeah, 2001. I remember opening this restaurant. Came to the grand opening and all that stuff. All right, um, well, I'm just going to open this up. Uh, I've got someone downstairs de-icing the coil, so... I'm gonna make note of the defrost time clock right here. You can mark them, you can do different things, but I'm gonna make note of where it's at and we're gonna defrost the coil. There's still power at this, so this guy still should be tracking and actuating. So we're gonna let it run, make sure that this advances. Um, it's a very good possibility that we have a bad defrost clock. It's hard to say. You can also pull the clock apart and look at the mechanics inside too. So unfortunately, this is iced up to the point that we're gonna have to use the misting function to get the motor free. Um, when you have them iced up around the motors like this, there's always a possibility you're gonna have to replace the motors. But we try to keep them as dry as possible. The other thing is that the ice is so thick that it wasn't draining. So the first thing we did was put our wand right here because we have all the different settings. We put it on jet and we just blew it right down into that spot right there just to clear the ice from the drain. And now all of a sudden we could just hear it whoosh right down the drain, it's going. So we just gotta slowly work on getting these things defrosted to where we can get the motors out and properly get in there and do everything. And then, uh, like I said, I have someone down here doing this and I'm gonna get upstairs and start changing that bad insulation because I actually have a piece in my truck, so. This is what we've pulled off of the back of this coil so far. Let's get up into here and look at how bad it is. Oh yeah, this coil is just impacted with nastiness. That can have a lot to do with why it's iced up for sure. So we're probably gonna get some coil cleaner on there. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but We'll have to use some of the blue cleaner once we brush off most of it and then we'll strip it a little bit more with the blue cleaner. So it has been an hour and a half and this clock has moved exactly an hour and a half. It went through a defrost and came out of a defrost and the motor's moving pretty good on the back. I popped this cover off the back right here and the motor's moving. So I think the defrost is working properly. It's interesting. Um, I mean, I know the coil's dirty. That could be the cause. So, all right, I still got my guy doing that. I'm gonna get started on uh, redoing the uh, insulation on this. We're not gonna cut the refrigeration lines. We're just gonna cut the insulation and do it that way. I got my little gauge for cutting the corners and stuff, so. I've never been like super impressed with my insulation skills and stuff, but it is what it is, guys. It's not gonna be perfect. Um, I tried to find the UV resistant insulation. I had a small piece of my truck, but it wasn't enough to do the whole job. So I shouldn't say this is like UV 100%. This stuff is UV resistant, but it's only gonna last a couple years. So um, I still gotta glue all the joints, but I cut them with the miter angles, you know. It's not perfect, it's not gonna be perfect. I just used the, the thing on the back of the box just to get the angles. If I wanted to be really crazy, I'd get a better blade and stuff, but it does what it does, guys. It's not the end of the world. I've got some Armaflex glue right here. 
Uh, honestly, I hate this stuff, but, oh man, I hope it's good. It feels like it might be dead. I'll see, I'll open it up. Again, I am absolutely not perfect at this, but what I find is, is let the glue sit for a minute, let it get tacky, then push it together and then tape it immediately. Again, it's not gonna be, my stuff's not supermarket quality fancy looking, so. It's funny how it'll turn out like half-ass decent when you're putting it on, and then when you go to tape it is when it starts to really look like crap. <laughs> but we got glue on the whole thing, it is what it is. Did the best we could, so. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, we're giving everything a quick rinse because we had the water hose. It is hot water, so it's actually doing a really good job. Uh, I don't think we're really at the level of coil cleaner per se, so we're just giving it a quick rinse. Now this is the other walk-in, that's the walk-in freezer. We already rinsed off our unit, and then we're going to, uh, I just rinsed out the inside too on the compressor in here a little bit. This area, the floor. I'm just trying to get some of the dust from ages out of that thing. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna do the last one and hopefully turn this on and finish evaluating why it iced up. All right, we're just letting the system operate. Everything's looking good so far, nothing too crazy. Pressures look fine, R22. Uh, Superheat's high, but the box temp is high, so it's still bringing it down. Uh, I mean, everything's looking great, so we're gonna give it some time and let it run. Um, I will say, it's odd, but now the defrost clock is not keeping time, because we haven't shut anything off, and uh, it's, it's not keeping time anymore. So I am gonna go ahead and change that defrost clock, but we're gonna watch the box come down in temp, too, so I'm probably gonna take a lunch, let it operate, and then we'll check the liquid level in the receiver also. All right, um, it's been running, we took a lunch, so it's been about a half an hour, um, about 100 degrees outside, 46 degrees inside the box, so it's still gonna be a little while. It was nice and 60 something degrees when it was iced up. But everything's looking good. Super Eats, just a hair on the high side, but I'm not gonna adjust it for that because by the time it comes down, it'll probably stabilize out. Um, again, system's running with a clear sight glass. This is R22. Uh, we are gonna change that clock because like I said, it's still kind of dragging right now. Um, and then uh, we're going to um, uh, check the liquid level in the receiver real quick. All right, the clock that I'm using, uh, mind you guys, don't freak out. The fan motors look funny because the camera's uh, um, refresh rate or whatever it is can't catch up. It's not the shutter speed. I know it's digital, but all right. Um, this guy right here is a Graslin DTAB40. It is a direct replacement for an 814520, which is what we pulled out. And also, as I pulled this out, I started looking at this clock. It's cracked. That's a crack right there. You go over to the back side. Look at this. The whole thing is is broken. Look over here. There's a big crack right here. So this thing's, yeah. This is an original clock, too. It's from 2001. I don't think it's ever been changed because it has the sticker on it. Um, so we've got our clock here. Uh, this should be controlling the solenoid valve, which is back there. Okay. So if we put it in defrost, it should pump down. Um, it is a direct replacement. You, they do have a little kit that you install, and then it has these little standoff chinguses, so it plugs in, and then you gotta put that plastic washer up there. Trust me from experience, you have to put that washer there. There's some solder joints right on the back, and they'll touch the metal, and it'll blow up. I learned that probably one of the first times many years ago when I put in one of these clocks and put it in there and put this, this thing up against the metal, and boom, thing just blew up. Um, so we're waiting for it to pump down right now. That's what it's doing. As soon as that's done, then it'll uh, shut off. Let me turn around. Let's see, yeah, we're pumping down at the moment. It's like the pressure control needs to be adjusted a little bit, huh? Because it hasn't shut off. And then you just take a screwdriver. Oh, I didn't even have to hit it, but I was about to, I was mid whack. Um, so we'll adjust that pressure control a little bit too, because it looks like it's a little out of whack. If we turn around, let's see. Yeah, see we're pulling into a vacuum. Um, all right, so we're gonna adjust the pressure control, but we know that the defrost clock is wired right and it actually works. Now, one of the things that I do like about the Graslin timer is you can be more aggressive in your defrost strategy. So I can put like an hour long defrost from two to four or two to three in the morning when nobody's in the building and then just periodic 15 minute defrost all throughout the day. 
when you use these old Paragon or even some of the digital time clocks like uh, the KE2 temp plus defrost controller that's a temp control and defrost or the A419 I think Johnson con digital control you can't have a different defrost at a different time as far as I know unless I'm mistaken on that one so if you set a 20 minute defrost duration in the key to therm temperature controller then it's that same duration for every defrost and I appreciate on the grassland ones that you can set a longer defrost in the middle of the night even on these you couldn't do that because these ones you only have one and this one looks like it was set for a 50 minute defrost that's a pretty long defrost for a walk-in cooler all right so if we look at the receiver we, we already heated up with a heat producing device the liquid levels right at the three-quarter mark that way uh you know we know that that's the maximum amount of refrigerant that we can put in that system all right i marked the liquid level for the next guy that way he knows that's where it's at um, this thing is doing everything that it possibly can it's running its heart away uh, let's see what our TDs are now the TDs are probably gonna be out look at that superheats dropping back down so now it's like 13 degrees so it's getting better um, so it's still 47 degrees in the box so it's gonna take some time 17 degree evaporator TD 18 degree condenser TD that's not too bad but it's still pulling down too um, all right, well, we're gonna watch this thing come down in temp for a little bit longer. All right, everything's looking good as far as how the TXV is feeding. I don't see any problems. The fact that the receiver level is good indicates we don't have any refrigerant leaks. The box is at about 46 degrees right now. The thermostat says 47, so I'm happy with that. It's set for 35 with the four, so that means it's gonna come down to 35 and then come up four degrees before it turns on. So it's gonna maintain 39 to 40 degrees in the box. Remove it, I mean, everything's good. It's just gonna take time. I have a feeling this thing has been warm for a little while. We also got back up into here uh, and sealed up some of those penetrations. They were sealed, but just not very good. So we sealed them up a little bit more. Same thing on that fire sprinkler. Got some spray foam in there, sealed it up. Um, but I mean, sensors right there in the airstream i think we're good this is it we're going to tell the customer to keep an eye on it um we can't really stay and watch this whole thing come down to 10 it's going to take a while so we're just going to let it be it's everything's working like it should be this is one thing that i've seen them do a couple times is this door is getting propped open by these boxes this shelf is kind of moved out and they're using that to prop the door open and they shouldn't be so i worry that because i've seen them do it since i've been here so I worry that they'll do that when I'm not here, and that's a problem. So walking coolers being iced up is a really common service call that I get, and sometimes it can be difficult figuring out what caused it, okay? If you have a defrost clock, you always wanna be suspect of the defrost clock. You always wanna look at the basics. Is the evaporator dirty? Is the temperature controller set too cold? Is someone leaving a door open? There's so many things that can cause it. And it can also be weird things like solenoid valve that's sticking or a temperature controller that's not shutting the system off, okay? Um, all of those things can cause walk-in coolers to ice up. One of the important things I'm gonna tell you is when you go to an iced up walk-in cooler, look at how it's frozen up, okay? Or if someone else defrosted it before you got there, you know? I have customers sometimes they'll say, okay, I'll defrost it for you. That way you don't have to charge me to do that. It's like, no, leave it alone because the way that it's iced up tells you a lot, okay? In this situation, when I walked up to it, it was top to bottom, front to back, left to right, solid ice, okay? That is typically not a refrigeration issue. That is um, a temperature controller sticking. The box is running too long. It's getting too cold is what's happening in that situation, okay? Now, um, or the evaporator coil. But a dirty evaporator coil plugged up, that can cause it to freeze up too because it's gonna continue to run, but it's not transferring heat, right? It's not absorbing heat from, from the occupied space inside the box and transferring it into the evaporator coil, but the coil is still getting cold, so it causes it to freeze up. So there's so many things screaming this was the cause in this video. At first, you know, it was dirty. We cleaned it. Then um, we looked at the door being left open. I showed at the end. I, I caught them doing that several times. And by the way, I took that shelf. I had um, someone else with me and we took the shelf and we shoved it back to the wall about five inches all the way back. What had happened was they had some uh, CO2 tanks installed 
for something, soda or whatever in the building. And they had strapped the, the shelves to the CO2 tanks. And over time, I believe it pulled the shelves forward as they had like, you know, when, when they didn't have a lot of boxes on that shelf, because the CO2 tanks were anchored to the wall and it was like ratcheted to the CO2 tanks with a ratchet strap. So I'm thinking that that's what pulled the shelf forward. So that could have been it. Um, the, uh, the defrost clock at first it was keeping time, but then towards the end it wasn't. All right. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of people in the video cause I get it all the time. Stop using Graslin clocks. They suck. Put in a key to therm temp plus defrost controller or get rid of those and use Paragon clocks or get rid of those and use a Johnson or pen a 419 or get rid of that and use a Dixel. Everybody has their preference for a temperature controller or for a defrost clock. Okay. Personally, I use all the different brands. Each situation requires a different control or different defrost clock in my situation. If I have a customer that's constantly leaving doors open, uh, not doing regular preventative maintenance, things like that, then I'm probably going to go with the Graslin route like I did in this video because you can be more aggressive with the defrost strategy, throw extra defrost in the middle of the night when the customer's not there, things like that. I like digital, I like temperature controllers that have built-in defrost, but they have a big flaw, like I mentioned in the video, in that w all the ones that I've come across so far, again, correct me if I'm wrong, okay, maybe I'm ignorant because half the time I don't read in instructions and, and I have been proven wrong in a lot of situations, but most of the time, um, you know, th the ones I run across, once you set the defrost duration, that's the same duration for every defrost, and that doesn't cut it with restaurant stuff, especially when people are leaving doors open all the time. It just doesn't work. Okay. Um, so there's a bunch of different brands out there and, and I try to, you know, if I can, I try to leave what's in there to make it easier to replace it. But in situations like this, I change it over to the grassland. I mean, it just depends. You know, if you're going to be in an area that has a lot of blowing sand, like out in the desert, the grassland clocks aren't the greatest because they get gummed up with sand. The Paragons hold up a little bit better for an outdoor mounted defrost clock. Okay. But then you have the ones that are mounted inside too. So there's so many different strategies and everything works guys. You know, it's all about just picking your battles and finding what you like. All right. So my evaluation of this walk-in cooler starts with just basic principles, okay? Just looking at it. How is it iced up? Get it defrosted? Is the coil dirty? Yes, okay? And we just proceed systematically. I went ahead and took care of the insulation on the suction line up on the roof. Insulation does make a big deal, guys, okay? That's your compressor cooling, right? And, I mean... In, you know, in an extreme situation, that suction line running through a really hot ambient, it's actually going to make the box perform less efficient. It's going to take a lot longer. Now it's marginal, but still that insulation makes a big difference. Okay. So you want to try to maintain and take care of that stuff when the customers allow you to. I really appreciate you guys making it to the end. Just like I say in every video, you guys are so awesome. Okay. If you haven't already, please check out my website, hvacrvideos.com merchandise available on there. There's links in the show notes of this video for all the different methods of ways that you can support the channel. Uh, remember True Tech Tools, the offer code Big Picture, one word. If you're interested in purchasing any tools, uh, I get a little bit of a kickback. I get a commission, you know, from from using the offer code. You guys get a discount. It's a cool way to support the channel too. So, I really appreciate you guys. Remember uh, Friday evenings on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel. Again, there's a link in the show notes. About 6:05 p.m. Pacific, I go live with my buddies and we kind of hash out what happened during the week with all our different jobs. Um, also go live on my channel Mondays, 5 p.m. Pacific work permitting. Um, so, hey, that's it. Thanks so much. And uh, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.